Today we are here to uh, encourage you uh, to hold fast to the promise of God. But before we get into the teaching today, let's go to the throne of grace in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you today. We thank you for the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, God. We thank you for revelation and knowledge, and we thank you for understanding, God. We thank you, Almighty God, that you made a promise to us that you would never leave us, that you would never forsake us, God, so that we may boldly say that the Lord is my helper. Whom shall we fear? And God, we thank you. We give you glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name, let the church say amen. Amen. Well, today we're teaching on fear not. This is a commandment from the Lord our God. He commanded us not to fear. In Isaiah 41 and verse 10, God said, fear not. And God proceeded to tell his people why they should not be afraid. He said, for I, I am with thee. So in the mind of God, I believe that if we really have a reality that God is with us, God said, there's no need to fear, I'm with you. In the Old Testament, God was with them. But in the New Testament, God is not only with us. The Bible declared that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit dwell within the believer's spirit in the presence of the Holy Spirit. We are awesome people. We do not have to fear because God is not only with us, he's dwelling in us. In John 14 and verse 20 says, Jesus said, at that day, you're talking about this day, that you shall know that I am in the Father, and ye in me, and I am in you. God the Father, and again, God the Holy Spirit dwell in us. Who can defeat the body of Christ? Who can overthrow the body of Christ? We are the body of Christ. We house around the spirit of the living God. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, it says, know ye not, do you not know this? You need to know this. We need to know that our temple is the temple of the Holy Spirit. He said, know ye not that your temple, your body, your body is the temple. It's God's dwelling place. Your body was created to be a carrier of God's glory, God's power dwelling in us. He said, know ye not that your body, your body, your body is the temple of God. Do we realize who God is? And he called our body his temple. The God that created the heaven and earth, the God that needed nothing to create something, just with the spoken words. And this God is telling us that your temple is now my dwelling place. Power dwelling in us. Authority dwelling in us. We are awesome people. It's time that the body of Christ think about who you are in Christ. He said, no, you're not. That my body is the temple of God. My body is, God did not say that our body was the temple of sickness, was the temple of torment. He said, your body is my temple, my dwelling place. He said, it's the temple of the almighty God. The same God that said in the book of Isaiah 41 and 10, said, fear not, for I am your God. He is the same God in the New Testament that dwells in us now. He said, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you. That's not, easy. That's not a deep revelation knowledge. You just could understand it. He said that the Spirit, the Spirit of God, he did not say the Spirit of hell. He did not say the Spirit of the devil. He did not say the Spirit of sickness. He said that the, your body is my dwelling place. My temple, I dwell in your body. Meaning that uh, Roman 8 and 11 says that the same spirit 
that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead. That same supernatural power that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead dwell in us. It dwell in us. We are housing around supernatural power, folks. Come on and wake up. We are powerful people. Fear has no root in our life. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Supernatural power dwelling in us. We are the most powerful people that ever walked upon the face of the earth because we have been given the privilege and the opportunity to be called a child of God. We have been given the privilege and the opportunity to be called the temple of God. God said, at that day, you should know that I am in the Father and you in me and I am in you. God said, we are living in that day. God the Father, power. God the Son, power. God the Holy Spirit, power. Dwelling us in the presence of the Holy Spirit. We possess supernatural power. The Bible said again in Isaiah 41 and 10. It said, be not dismayed. Do not be um." Worried or upset or, or, or always afraid to do this place, afraid to look at this. Yes, we should obey the law of the land. God said that we should obey the law of the land, and we will. But we will not obey it with fear. We will not obey it being so fearful. We will obey the law of the land because God said that we are to obey up the law of the land. But God never said that we are to be fearful of the law of the land. We are still to walk as born again, redeemed child of God that can call out a darkness translated into the kingdom of God, their son, a place that we never been before. We are the people of God. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. We are not to back down and be fearful. Yes, I'll say again, we obey the law of the land. We do whatever they ask us to do. But I will not do it being fearful. Because God said that. God has not given me a spirit of fear. So God has given me, he said, I have not given you a spirit of fear in 1 Timothy 6. Seven, uh, uh, one and seven. He said, but God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he given us a spirit of power, supernatural power, supernatural power, the spirit of love. And he said, he did not give us a fear for mind. He has given us a solid mind, a mind that can stand fast, unmovable, unshakable, yet we know what's going on in the world, but we're not afraid because the Bible says, fear ye not, for I am your God. God. And I choose to obey the word of God. Against all odds and what's going on, I choose to not to fear. I have to make a choice. I can be fearful or I cannot be fearful. God said, I'm telling you why you do not have to bow to the spirit of fear. Why, God? I am with you. I am God. I am the Lord, your God. I'm with you. Do you know who I am? I am the Lord of creation. Amen. So, Bible says, all things come into a stand still when He speaks, because He is Jehovah Nishri. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the Lily of the Valley. He is our God. He said, Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen thee. I will strengthen your faith in who I am. I am your God. Philippians 4.19 picks it up in the New Testament. Thank God. He picks it up in the New Testament. He says, if I believe Philippians 4.13 was written for believers' confession in the midst of what's going on now. I can do all things. I can be steadfast, unmovable. But I cannot do it on my own. I can do all things through the energizing power, through Christ Jesus, through Christ Jesus. 
through Christ Jesus, who will energize me, who will propel me, who will motivate me to do all things. He strengthened us. He, he breathed his energy in us. We are peculiar people. We are, belongs to a holy nation. Why are we so peculiar? Because we house around the presence of God. We house around God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. And we are the, we house around supernatural power, making us different from the world. So then I can understand the world being fearful, but we are here to encourage them. We are here to let them know there's hope in Jesus. We are here to let them know, yes, all things are possible with God. These things are not here to just take you out, but these things are here for a reason. So we trust in God. We know as believers in Christ Jesus, we know in whom we have believed, and we are fully persuaded that God is able to keep us yes. steadfast, unmovable, if we keep fear out of our spirit. That's what God always would tell us. When he come up on his people, he said, fear not. I'm telling you why. I'm your God. I'm with you. Do not be afraid. And 1 John 5 and um, 4, we all know John, 1 John 4 and 4, he says, we are the church. We are born of God. The Bible says, whatsoever, whosoever is born of God overcome the world. And he said, greater is he. Greater is he that is what? In us. That means he's dwelling in us. He's not outside of us. Yes, he's with us because the angel of the Lord is camped round about us. But now in the New Testament, God is in us. He's dwelling in us. And that's why Jesus boldly sent his, his uh, disciple to write this statement to his church. He said, tell them, I want them to know that greater is he that is in them than he that is in the world. God called himself great in us. What do we call him? Do we call him great? He said, greater is he. He's great otherwise God said the words. God is saying, I'm greater than anything that's going on in your life. I'm greater than the situation. I'm greater than the problem. I am greater than anything that can confront you. Believers in Christ, we need to think before we act in the emotion. Think if God said that he was in us, and he was greater than the situation. I trust him. I stay fast on what his word has said. First John chapter 5 and verse 4 says, Whatsoever again is born of God overcome the world. And this is the victory. This is the victory that overcomes the world. What's overcome the world? Our faith in God. That's all. This is your faith. Your faith in God. He said, the victory that defeats the world is our faith in who Jesus is. And we know, all know that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. He said, this victory, this knowing that, you overcome the world. This knowing who Jesus is, you can overcome the world. Amen. This knowing, I mean, it's not a big effort that we have to put up. He said, if you just know that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you can overcome every problem, you can overcome every situation, you can overcome every circumstance in life. It's just to know that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. This is your victory. This is our victory. Just to know that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. And again, I was saying earlier that in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, I might have said first, but it's 2 Timothy 1 and 7. And the Bible said again, God always warned us about this spirit of fear. Spirit of fear is a spirit that will torment your mind to no end. Spirit of fear will make you act and do things that you would not normally do. Spirit of fear will make you afraid of your shadow. Spirit of fear, God said, fear not. Fear not. Why? I have not given you the spirit of fear. You do not accept what God has not given. Why should I accept fear when God has not given me? He has given me power, sound mind, love. And Psalm 23, and this is best heart that David said. See, 
fear have always been present around God's people. You read it in the Old Testament. I think it said over 99 times God came upon his people so fear not. Fear have always been around to torment God's people. But you see, this is a new day. We are the people of God. We have God living in us. See, we, they didn't have the name of Jesus to exercise authority over the spirit of fear. But in the New Testament, God said he given a, Jesus a name that is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus, every demon, every principality, every problem, every sickness, have to bow on their knees. Let's use what God has given us. Let's use the name of Jesus upon the spirit of fear. And let fear know that God has not given me this spirit. You will no longer torment me. You will no longer make me go out and, and just, just, you know, just be afraid of everything. Yes, I obey the law of the land, but I will not obey it with fear. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. David said, David faced the same issue. He dealt with the spirit of fear. David said, yea, though I walk. Through the valley of shadow of death. He said, yes, I'm in a hard place now. I mean, they're walking through the valley of shadow of death. I don't know what I'm going to make it or not, but one thing I do know, right. I will not feel no evil. Amen. Because God, because God is with me. Amen. Why? I have this confidence. Yes, I'm down in a deep valley. Yes, I don't know when I'm going to make it tomorrow or not, but one thing I do know, I will not fear because God is with me. See, David knew who was with him. Yes. The church need to know, not know, but have a, get a um, reality of who is with you. Amen. No one is one thing, but a reality is another thing. We need to have a reality that God is with me. And not only is he with me, he's dwelling in us. He was just with David, and David stood up in his God-given image. But God not only is with us, the Bible said that our body is not the spirit of the living God, that God's spirit dwells in us. And the same spirit that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead, that supernatural power did not dwell in David, but yet David knew that God was with him. And that's that's all David needs to know. And he, he double dog, dad feared to come near his door because he knew God was with him. He said, God, he said, fear not. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Put all power and of love and of sound mind steadfast on what God has done for us in Christ Jesus. When he said, it is what? Finish fear. Have no more power over our people. It's over. God has given us authority in the mighty name of Jesus to bound up principality and power. Ungodly spirits in high places. And the Bible says again in Acts 17 and 28, it says, in him we live. We live in him. We do not live in fear. In him we live and we move and we have, we exist in him. We do not Existing the spirit of fear. Colossians 2 19 says, For in him, in him, in Christ Jesus, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And in him, ye are complete. We are complete in Christ Jesus. We lack nothing. Nothing missing and nothing broken. We are complete in him. The Bible says in John 1 and 12, it said, to as many as received him, to them he gave them power to become something that they've never been before. He said, I give you the power. You have the power to become the son of the living God, to become something that you never dreamed that you could become. But God has given us the power. And the same power that God has given us to become the sons of God, we have that supernatural power dwelling in us not to accept fear because God has not given us the spirit of fear. And a, um, he said, and you are complete in him. We complete. Verse 10 said, and ye are complete in him, which is the head. Jesus Christ is the head of all sickness, all principality, all evil spirit. He is the head and we are the body of Christ. 
If the head is not sick, the body is not sick. We are the living God uh, creation that created us for his own pleasure. The Bible said for his pleasure were we created. We were not created for the devil pleasure. We were not created for sickness. We were not created for situations. Yes, they come. But God has given us authority over them in the name of Jesus because God has given us the privilege in there and that the power to exercise authority over the enemy. It always gives us an opportunity when the enemy raises his head up and try to threaten the church. It gives the church a target to gun at. It always gives the church and push the church in a place that the church would not have been. It push the church on their knees. It push the church of praying again. It push the church of praising and worshiping God again. It always push us to do something. When 9-11 hit, it push the church to love God again. It pushed the church to start praying again. It always, I don't know why something has to come as a threat to our life in order to push us to God. Amen. To think about God. See, we, you know, and it's, it, it's, it's good and it's not good. But the world, we need to get to a place in Christ Jesus when these things come upon the world, we are to be a witness. We are to be a witness to let the people know, get your house in order. God is soon to come. We should be a witness. That's why God called us the light of the world. He did not call us darkness. He said, you are the light, you are salt. You are, we are to make a difference now. This is a good time. The harvest is ready. God needs some labors out there because this is a good time. He can't have his labor fearful. Careful to, 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 to move, yes, obey the law of the land. But again, do not obey it with fear. Amen. Do not obey it with fear. In Ephesians uh, chapter 2 and verse 4 and 7 declares that the believer dwell in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, if I really believe that, if I believe it, I know it, but the reality of it is a complete different thing. If I believe that I, I am Dwelling in a secret place or dwelling in heavenly place in Christ Jesus. See, I had nothing to do with this. God mercy and God grace have raised us up together and made us set together in heavenly place in Christ Jesus. So that means that we are far above all principality and power. We are far above all other things that's going on. Because we are seated with him in heavenly places, we are far above everything. God made us that way. We was born that way. The Bible said, I mean, who so uh, ever believed that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? He said, we are all matter overcomer. Disbelieve in that. We have the victory to overcome everything that comes upon the face of this earth because we are believers. We are overcomers. We dwell in him and he dwell in us. We are overcomers. We are complete in him. We have complete authority. We have complete complete ability to do whatever God called the church to do because God is with us. His mercy, his grace has raised us up together and made us, we did not make ourselves, we could not make ourselves. That's why God's mercy and his grace had to make us, qualify us, justify us to be fit to be accepted into the body of Christ. And God's grace and mercy have raised us up together with Christ Jesus and it made us we didn't ask to sit there. It made us sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And we all know that heavenly places in Christ Jesus is far above all principality and power. All evil spirit, all every sickness that can come on the face of the earth. Heavenly places far above that. And we are seated with him and the spirit. Yes, our flesh live in the world and walk upon this earth, but in this mind of God, we are to set our mind where we have been raised up in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And then in John 14 and 18, Jesus made this promise to us. It is so dear to me, and I'm sure it's so dear to you. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. Be not afraid. I will not leave you confidence. I promise you. I promise you I'm coming back. I promise you I'll be back. I'm not going to leave you to face these crowd trials and, and situations, the problems that's going on. You cannot handle these things. 
I promise you, I will be back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. When I come back this time, well, I will no longer be with you. I will be dwelling in you. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And on that day of Pentecost, Jesus came back in the presence of the Holy Spirit to dwell within his people, to empower us with that supernatural power. He kept his promise. We are not without a comfort today because of what's going on. God promised not to never leave us. He promised not to never forsake us. He promised to always be with us. He promised that he would dwell in us. He promised us that our body would become his dwelling place. He promised us that we do not have to, to worry about anything, that he given us a name that which is above every other name. He given us a name that we can use in heaven, hell, and earth. He given us the name of Jesus, the highly exalted name. He given us that name. Jesus promised us that he would never leave us comfortless, and he came back on the day of Pentecost. And Psalm 23 and 4, you know, David knew. That's why he said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death. That's what David would say if he was here today alive. I think it would be his words today to the church. I believe that David had to preach to the church. He would stand up in the pulpit and say, Yea, though we walk. Through the valley of shadow of death, church, but we fear no evil. David's not going to tell you why we fear no evil. God is with us. My God, God is with us. God bless you, and I pray that this message that bless your soul and encourage you to hold fast to that which God has given us in the name of Jesus. And I just pray a quick prayer over you today. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that your people will receive your word in your power and that they will remember the word that you spoke to us that you would never leave us nor forsake us that you will come to us God and you came back and you now dwelling in us God so that we can boldly say the Lord is my helper whom shall I fear God bless you